Hello, my name's Rose Davidson. I'm from doesbiz.com. I'm hoping this finds you well today. I'm on the online prosperity show today talking about how to cope as a mum in business. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today I've brought you the business service specialist, Rose Davidson. Rose, how are you doing, my love? I'm very well prospering yourself. Fantastic. Now, obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you would understand that we always bring you experts in their own realm to help you start, scale, and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And also, sometimes in the process, you might need a business consultant, you might need a business coach, you might need a social media manager, you also might need somebody to proofread or edit or format your forms, your documents, and you also might need somebody to design your website, your landing page, and everything else that happens in the back end of your office. Now, all of this might be a whole lot of work if you're a mom that's working from home or you just started in business. And that's the reason why people like Rose, whose business is entirely based on helping you with the back end admin work as a business uh, services specialist to actually help you um, leverage your time so you can do what you know best. Now, Rose has worked with uh, numerous um, organizations um, ranging from the courts and other um, you know, establishments within the corporate sector. So she's here to tell, tell us what it actually is like to cope as a mom in business uh, based on the ebook that she's just written. Now, Rose, I could go on and on and on <laughs> talking about this, but this show is not about me. It's all about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you um, became the business services specialist there. Um, I guess I, after about uh, 30 years of working for other people uh, in various different roles from customs officer to, to court officer and receptionist and other roles like that, I decided that it was time for me to get out on my own and to use the skills and knowledge that I have to and, and to give to others because I found out that a lot of people um, were struggling with their business. Um, they didn't know where to look for advice. They didn't know where to really look for help. Um, and I knew that my skills um, could help them along in their journey. Absolutely. So just pulling back the curtain a little bit, um, you have been in Australia for a fair amount of time, but you're originally from Canada. Can you just tell us the transition that would have taken place um, as somebody who came in from another country coming to work in Australia and how that might affect a few other mothers that are transitioning uh, from wherever they're coming from into the whole entrepreneurial sort of space? Well, I came to Australia when I was 12, so I wasn't working then. I started, actually started my first job when I was 14. I worked in a fish and chip shop in the Blue Mountains in, uh, in New South Wales. So, and I really didn't start my working life until I was about 18. So, but the transition coming to Australia was quite a culture shock, uh, even when I was 12. I mean, when, when I was that age, we had colour televisions and portable televisions and the toys were different and, and um, the language was obviously different and they used different terms. And so I found that quite a challenge when I got here. Uh, and in business still, I find some of the language that, that other people use, um, because I'm a, I'm a sort of, I guess, meat and potatoes, down to earth sort of a person, I like to use plain, simple language. And so some of the jargon that's used by other coaches or mentors or uh, uh, administration people, you know, it, it's not understood by the by the grassroots people, I guess. And so, yeah, that, I think that's where I differ. I just like to use plain, simple language and, and not use big words. I try not to, unless it's payday. <laughs> Absolutely. So basically, <laughs> um, some people might just think, oh, it's going to be difficult for me to transition or it's going to be hard for me to do all this work uh, while juggling family, uh, kids, and all other, you know, chores that um, women have to go through in order to have a happier existence. Now, how does your business, Does Beads, come into play to help people uh, in these situations? Well, it, it is difficult being a mum in business. I was a mum in business some years ago. My husband and I owned a busy retail food shop on the Gold Coast. 
uh, in Queensland, and um, and uh, my children were uh, preteen and 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 and, uh, and in early teens, and um, trying to work full time in the shop, which was very busy, it was like twelve hour days, and then go home and look after the kids, it was really hard, and then. Um, you know, I went out and actually got work. But to transition from being a mum to a mum in business, you have to find um, other skills within yourself or find people who can help you find those skills. So, you know, time management is, is a great uh, skill that you need to, to find because um, not everyone is knows how to manage their time effectively or efficiently and... And sometimes our, our mums don't have um, help, you know, um, outside of the home. So, you know, child minding and all that sorts of things. So there are other mothers um, out there that are in the same position that you might be able to do, you know, swap days. So if you want a, a, um, a child-free business day, you know, find another mum who, who will child mind for you and in return... While she's having a, a business day, you could, you know, perhaps child mind for her. And there's other things, and you know, and, and with your spouse um, or your partner, you know, f um, find or get uh, talk to them and find ways that they might be able to help you in your journey as well. Um, you know, they might be able to take up extra duties at home just to to um, you know allow you to be less stressed, I guess, and less overwhelmed because you know, business is hard, especially at startup. It's you know, you've got to figure out, um, you know, where's the money coming from? You know, especially if you've left the corporate world, where's the money going to come from? Um, where, where is, it? how am I going to look after my child? How am I going to look after my family? You know, when am I going to find time to, you know, get my hair done, my nails done or go and do the groceries or, you know, how much time do I have to actually spend inside my business to get out there so people can actually see me, you know, do I, do I use Facebook, do I use Twitter, do I use Instagram, do I use LinkedIn, you know, do I build a website first off? Well, the answer to that is no. You, websites can wait, you know, that's not important. It, it is, you know, maybe a year or two down the track when, you know, you get some finances behind you unless you can find someone that can do for you, one for you and, um, you know, but LinkedIn Social media is really important in this day and age, I believe, that you've really got to get your face out there and networking, um, personal networking is, is really important as well. You know, you need to go to the networking events. You need to, I mean, if you can't afford to get business cards, at least get your name and your face out in the public. It's really important that you do that. Absolutely. I, and I really appreciate the kind of work that you do there, Rose, because half of the time when people don't have that work-life balance and they can't juggle, um, you know, these kids, husband, duties at home and also run a fully, uh, you know, profitable and enjoyable business, they start suffering from what's called imposter syndrome because they start feeling that if I can't manage my household, how am I going to present myself out in the world. Now you address that perfectly in your ebook. Um, you know, just just walk us through what what normally happens with people when when they're suffering through uh, imposter syndrome. Well, I guess um, imposter syndrome is when you start to feel um, you know that you're good enough. You know, you've got the skills, you've got the abilities, but then you fall into a trap of, am I good enough? You know. I, I'm not being seen by the right people or am I being seen but nothing's happening. There's crickets happening all around you everywhere. Um, so then you start to feel fearful. You start to get anxious. You start to get overwhelmed. And in my ebook, um, there is a section about how to, to deal with that. Um, I don't want to go into it too much because it will give away what's in the ebook. But, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, yeah. And, and again, with comparisonitis, comparisonitis, you're always, I can't, I don't know one person in this that I, that I know that has not compared themselves to another person in some way. Like, they earn more money, they look better than me, their shirts are better than mine, their dress is better, their shoes are better, their kids are better behaved. They have more books than I have. You know, there's some way. You've got to stop doing that because... We are all individuals. If we all were the same, the world would be a total boring place. 
So you've got to stop comparing yourself. And the, again, there's a section in my book about how to deal with comparisonitis and some, I think there's four steps in there and how you can deal with that. So, yeah, that's another thing that, you know, mums in business will do or anyone in business will compare themselves to others when there's really no need to do that because your business is unique. Your business is you. And if you aren't your business, then, and you're not, I guess, not preaching, or you've got to preach to the converted, I guess. You, you have to let them know that you're the person that they want to work with. And um, so comparing yourself to somebody else is not going to get you anywhere. Absolutely. And also, like you mentioned that, um, you know, when you are out there and wanting to, to be seen maybe by the right people and um, connect to the right kind of people as well, there's so much that uh, seems necessary, you know, so much of the social media presence that needs to be uh, looked after so much of the website, like you talked about, which doesn't need to happen up until you're ready for it. Um, and then people start really comparing uh, themselves and also wanting to do everything. Now, this is where you then help them to let go of some of these um, activities. What, what sort of, um, you know, roadblocks do you find with people that don't want to let go of the kind of work that they are supposed to be outsourcing to ex experts like yourself so that they can do more with the time that they would have managed to leverage? I think uh, the first is finances. Um, people don't want to let go because they think that it's a waste of money. But ultimately, if you are outsourcing something, you're actually um, allowing yourself more time to put yourself out there. So outsourcing something that, um, like your social media management, um, that takes up a lot of time. But whilst you outsource that, you could be devoting yourself to other things. So you could be going to more networking. You could be spending more time with your family, which is really ultimately um, a goal if you're going to be a happy, a happy chappy in business, I guess. You have to be happy at home. If you're not happy at home and you're not looking after yourself, everything is going to fall to pieces and you're not going to have a business, you're not going to have a family. You might as well just, you know, crawl in a hole and die, basically, um, which is a bit cruel, but, you know, that, that's the fact of life. Other roadblocks, um, um, they don't like to lose control. They think that no one else can do it as well as they can. Um, and could, uh, people that have that sort of, those sorts of issues, I think will also find themselves burnt out as well. Um, they don't take advice from other people which I think is really important um, because people, other, others um, that have been in, in the game for a while have been where they are at some point and their advice, obviously they've gained it through all their experience. So, you know, at least listen to it and don't dismiss it. Um, I think that's really important. Um, other roadblocks um, could be just, their family, their family would be maybe saying, well, you know, why are you in this business? You know, why have you decided to leave the corporate world and start out on your own when you seemed quite happy? We were earning great dollars. Um, you know, why do this? And again, that, that brings back to um, the guilt. There's the feelings of guilt. And then there's the mummy guilt, of course, because, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to be, people to see that you're actually neglecting your, your children or your family. So there's lots of roadblocks to, to starting up in a business, um, but they can be overcome with the, right, with the right advice and the right mentoring. Absolutely. So in one of the things that you mentioned as a roadblock was finances there, Rose. I mean, you can't go past that. But in your ebook, you have actually supplied, um, you know, a few free business tools that people can actually utilize so that uh, it alleviates them from um, the, you know, the, the, the burden of having to, to, to have to pay for that. So just give us a glimpse of maybe a couple of the tools that they can find in the ebook that you, you've got out there, um, Rose. Well, there's a social media. Um, they're all done in Excel spreadsheets, so they're really easy to follow. There's um, tools um, and links are provided within the spreadsheet, so links to, to whatever application it is that I've suggested. Um, so there's applications for um, social media posting. There's a, a, an Excel spreadsheet that's actually set up 
for all your social media posting. So it's like a calendar and you just um, use that um, for, um, for each month and, you know, so you can actually schedule your posting and you know, know what you're scheduling. There's um, mobile phone applications that you can um, use. Um, so if you want to do your graphics and things, there's really good um, applications you can put on your phone if you're, you know, you're busy and you think, oh, you know, you're out somewhere and think, oh, yeah, I haven't done my Facebook or I haven't done this or that or I just want to do a graphic for something for later. And then there's applications for that. Uh, if you're a blogger, there's um, a tool in there um, about uh, how you can get your blog out there um, and what steps you need to take after you've done your blog, especially if you're uh, new to blogging. Um, what's the other one? Oh, there's quite a few. I think there's about nine of them in all. Um, oh, PR, public relations. There's a couple of things on how to get your uh, public... Uh, yourself out there so by you can get your blog out into a newspaper or um, uh, there's a, some site that you can go to that um, uh, you can it's like a game show thing and you, you know you can get all sorts of other things it's, it's good there's, there's there's about nine of them all in in all in the book so they're in about the middle of the book so um, it follows in one of the chapters so Absolutely. Now, Rose, I can't thank you enough for the time that you've spent with us on the show. I mean, and especially all the value that you've given us, um, you know, based on your ebook that's uh, that was just recently launched, How to Cope as a Mom in Business. Now, we might have a mom that would have, was watching this show right now. Um, they're a mom, they're an online entrepreneur, they're overwhelmed with tasks, they're feeling guilty because they're spending far too much time, you know, either working or just thinking about working it in and of itself. And they really wish to relax more and they want to play with their kids more or just simply go and get their nails done. I was laughing at my um, wife the other day when she was telling me that it's actually a blessing to have uh, both my legs shaved at the same time because of the little girl that we have <laughs> never gives them the opportunity. So there could be women out there that are going through that and especially when they have to showcase and also uh, be the business person that's helping clients out there. What sort of last words can you give to the mothers out there that are going through it all and still trying to keep their head above water? I guess uh, be yourself. Don't let anyone or anything change you. Always be yourself. Be authentic and be real to yourself, to your family, to your clients. That is really important. Um, give up the mummy, mummy guilt. Um, it doesn't serve a purpose. Um, I know it's hard, but you have to give it up. Um, I guess seek advice if you're unsure about where to go. And... Um, and, uh, yeah, if you need some help, there's always my website. It's uh, www.doesbiz.com. And uh, there's lots of hints and tips and blogs and the, uh, the tools are on, uh, free tools are on there if you didn't, and my ebooks on there as well. So, Absolutely. I will be putting in the link. I will be putting in the link to the ebook um, as we, um, in, in, the, in, the, in the show notes below. Now, Rose, I've already thanked you so much. And if you've been watching this show right now, help me thank Rose for her time because obviously she could have been uh, behind the scenes helping um, women like yourself that are doing too much work in their business and they're doing those tedious and mundane administrative and also social media and maybe general office tasks that you can just handball uh, to experts like uh, Rose that can actually just do them um, for you so that you can be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Now, Rose, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Prosper.